We continue our reading of From the Heart, a daily devotional by author Ellen G. White. Today's reading, November 16. Victory at Last Then I looked, and behold, a lamb standing on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000, having his Father's name written on their foreheads. Revelation 14, 1. The decree is to go forth that all who will not receive the mark of the beast shall neither buy nor sell, and finally, that they shall be put to death. But the saints of God do not receive the mark. The prophet of Patmos beheld those that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name, standing on the sea of glass, having the harps of God, and singing the song of Moses and the Lamb. To every soul will come the searching test. Shall I obey God rather than men? The decisive hour is even now at hand. Satan is putting forth his utmost efforts in the rage of a last despairing struggle against Christ and his followers. False teachers are employing every device possible to stimulate the hardened sinner in his rebellious daring, to confirm the questioning, the doubting, the unbelieving, and by misrepresentation and falsehood to deceive, if it were possible, the very elect who are prepared to stand firmly under the banner on which is described the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Christ never purchased peace and friendship by compromise with evil. Though his heart overflowed with love toward the human race, he could not be indulgent to their sins because he loved men and women He was a stern reprover of their vices. His life of suffering, the humiliation to which he was subjected by a perverse nation, show his followers that there must be no sacrifice of principle. God's tried people must maintain watchfulness with fervent prayer, lest in their eagerness to prevent discord they surrender truth and thus dishonor the God of truth. Peace is too dearly obtained if purchased by the smallest concession to Satan's agencies. The least surrender of principle entangles us in the snare of the enemy. Paul writes to the Romans, If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. But there is a point beyond which it is impossible to maintain union and harmony without the sacrifice of principle. Separation then becomes an absolute duty. The laws of nations should be respected when they do not conflict with the laws of God. But when there is collision between them, every true disciple of Christ will say, as did the Apostle Peter, when commanded to speak no more in the name of Jesus, we ought to obey God rather than men. Signs of the Times, November 8, 1899. This concludes our reading today of From the Heart, Abide with Me. Our final hymn is a prayer for God's company at life's darkest moments.